in nominal equation. The roots, or sometimes called zeros of solutions of a polynomial, are the values of x for which p of x is equal to zero. Finding the roots of a polynomial is sometimes called solving the polynomial. Let us see now how do we determine the roots from a given polynomial. Let us start with this example. Example number one, x minus five, x minus two and x plus four equals zero. The number of real roots that we do have here is 3. Why is it 3? Since our given polynomial is written in factored form, it is as simple as counting the number of factors that we do have. So we do have 1, 2, and 3. So since we do have 3 factors, therefore the number of, of real roots that we are to look for is 3. The question now is, what are those roots? So it is as simple as solving. So we just simply use each factor piece by piece and equating each factor to 0. So just like this one, if we do have x minus 5, so we will just simply equate this factor to 0. Then solving it properly, so I may transpose this negative 5 to the other side of the equation, making it positive 5. So what we do have now is x equals 0 plus 5. And 0 plus 5, obviously the answer is 5. Okay. So therefore, one of the roots of this polynomial is 5. For the second one, since we do have x minus 2, so if you notice, it is as simple as using the opposite or the additive inverse of the constant. Since our given polynomial or the given factors rather is, is just only in linear form. So if we do have x minus 2, therefore the value of x for this one is said to be positive 2 upon transposing. And for the last one, we do have x plus 4, so upon transposing the positive 4, so we will have negative 4 as the value of x. So therefore, the third root for this polynomial is negative 4. So this is how we get the roots of a given polynomial once they are written in factored form. Let's have another example. Let's have this example number 2. x plus 1, x plus 5, x minus 2, quantity to the third power equals 0. So how many roots are we do we have from this one? So we do have 1, 2, then since our x minus 2 is related to the third power, so 2 plus 3, so the number of roots for this one is 5. Again, we do have 1, 2, then the third factor is written on the third degree, so therefore 2 plus 3, so that's why we do have 5 number of real roots to look for. Now, what are those roots that we do have from this polynomial? The first one is written in x is x plus 1. So, transposing that positive 1, so we will get negative 1. Then, x plus 5, transposing that positive 5 on the other side, so we will have negative 5. While the other one, so we do have x minus 2 upon transposing that negative 2 to the other side, so we will get positive 2. So, therefore, what are the roots? So, the roots are negative 1 negative 5, and positive 2, since uh, that positive 2 came, came from an exponential term, so which is raised to the third power, so we may state that 2 with a multiplicity of 3. So we do have 5 number of roots, so negative 1, negative 5, positive 2, another positive 2, and another positive 2, because there's a multiplicity of 3. Third example. Let us have this one. 2x x minus 7, x minus 10, and x plus 6 equals 0. So how many real roots do we have from this one? So notice that we do have a term appearing outside which is a monomial. So it counts as 1. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So there are 4, we do have 4 real number of real roots for this polynomial. And now, what are the roots for this one? So for the polynomial, so since we do only have 2x and we don't have the presence of a constant term, so, we just simply go into equate to 0. Then, we divide both sides by 2 to cancel out the numerical coefficient of x. So, 0 divided by 2, the answer is 0. So, therefore, one of the roots from this polynomial is 0. So, for x minus 7, we know that we just simply transpose that constant on the other side of the equation. So, negative 7 will become now positive 7. For x minus 10, transposing that negative 10 on the other side of the equation will give us positive 10. And for x plus 6, transposing that constant on the other side of the equation so will give us negative 6. So thus, the roots for this polynomial are the number 0, positive 7, 
positive 10 and negative 6. Example number 4. 3x to the 4th power times 2x minus 3 times 4x plus 7 times x plus 6 equals 0. So here, how many number of units do we have? So notice that our monomial, our factor appearing outside our monomial is on the 4th degree. So it will have 4 counts. So 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So that gives us the number of real roots be equal to 7. So we do have 7 number of real roots for this one. And what are the roots? So since our monomial here, which is not accompanied by a constant, is raised to the 4th degree. So therefore we're going to have x equals to 0. And there will be a multiplicity of 4 since it is written on the 4th degree. Again, Keep in mind that whenever that they are given monomial or the term has no constant term, automatically the value of x for it is 0. So if we do have 2x minus 3, so if we are to compute that algebraically, so 2x minus 3 equals 0. So we just simply going to equate to 0 again. So transposing that negative 3 on the other side of the equation, so we will have now 2x equals positive 3. So, to obtain the value of x, we just simply divide both sides of the equation by number 2. Therefore, that gives us the value of x equals 3 over 2. Okay. And for us to make it simple, if we don't want any computation to make, it, to make it a bit faster, so just keep in mind that you're simply going to change the sign or use the additive inverse of the constant. So, for this one, for the third one, so since we do have positive 7, therefore the value of x for that one is negative 7. Since our term, our x has a visible numerical coefficient. So this numerical coefficient will be the denominator of the value of x. So we do have x equals negative 7, so we do have a denominator of 4. Same thing happened on the second one. So negative 3 becoming positive 3, then over the numerical coefficient of our x, which is 2. So that's how simple it is. For the last one, we do have x plus 6. So, getting the value of x, so it is as simple as x equals negative 6. So, no denominator, no visible denominator since our x has no visible numerical coefficient. So, therefore, the roots for this polynomial are 0 with a multiplicity of 4 since our monomial or that term is on the 4th degree. Then followed by positive 3 over 2, then negative 7 over 4, and last with negative 6. Example number 5. How about if we are to deal with this kind of polynomial to wherein it is not written in factored form? So how are we supposed to find the roots? Okay, so the number of real roots for this kind is obviously 3. Since our given expression is not in factored form, we just simply going to use the highest degree or the degree of the polynomial as the basis for determining the number of real roots. So since it is written at the third degree or the highest degree is 3, so we do have 3 number of real roots. The question now is, what are the roots present from this one? So unlike the previous examples that we had, they are already written in factored form. For this one, it is not. It is written in standard form. So how are we to find the roots? So we're just simply going to use the synthetic division for us to find the roots. Okay, so we know how to use synthetic division. So first thing is we extract the numerical coefficients present on our given polynomial and those are the numbers 1, negative 6, then negative 1, then positive 30. So we're just simply going to do trial and error approach. And let us find the numbers that will give us a zero remainder. Same idea in factoring. Okay, so zeros. That's why they are also called zeros. So that's why the roots are also called zeros or solutions. Okay, so let us, you may try any number that you would like to start from. So let us just simply wish that we will have a zero value. So let me try negative 2. So bring down 1, 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, negative 6 plus negative 2 is negative 8, negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16, negative, six, negative 1 plus 16 is positive 15, and 15 times negative 2 is negative 30. Okay, so we do have 0, so therefore that is one of the roots, so we do have negative 2 as one of the roots. So we are to look 3 because our expression is in the third degree. So same idea under factoring. So we do have 3 factors, therefore we are to have 3 roots as well. 
Okay, so let us hope to have a zero value to the number that we will choose from the left side. So let me try number 3. Again, you may use any number that you prefer that you do feel will give you a, you a zero remainder. So bring down 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Negative 8 plus 3 is negative 5. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. Now I say it is 0. So for the last one, so I will use positive 5, of course. So giving me a 0 value. So bring down 1. 1 times 5 is 5. Negative 5 plus 5 is 0. So we managed to get all of these three numbers that give us zeros or zero remainder. So therefore, the roots now of our given polynomial are the numbers negative 2, positive 3, and positive 5. So this is what you are to do if you are going to look for the roots of a given polynomial that is not written in factored form. Instead, they are written in standard form, so just like this example number 5. So plainly, just simply use the synthetic division or any factoring method that you are aware of. So thank you. So this is how we find the roots of a given polynomial or we find the zeros or find the solutions of a given polynomial. So thank you for watching. Hope to see you again.